Good afternoon and welcome to Omni Dog and Omni Cat's comic book review show. I'm Omni Dog and this is my co host, Omni Cat. Hey, Hello. Omnicat. Hey. And we were just talking about what a great movie Spice World was. <laughs> we were. <laughs> I, I was, uh, <clears throat> you're, I, I'm assuming you're probably around my daughter's age. And so when she was into Spice World, that's probably when you were into it. And so I was exploring exposed to that movie <laughs> multiple <laughs> times in the theater oh, yeah. and in uh on the i think we even had it it wasn't even blu-ray yet it was like a v vhs tape mm -hmm. we watched it relentlessly and it was i thought it was really funny it made fun of itself and it was yeah. really funny. that's what people i think forget about it because they're like oh the spice girls just made a movie and that's stupid no it was brilliant because the movie was about them making a movie and how stupid that concept is right. <laughs> it made fun of itself it had so many great like actual people elton john was in it um alan cumming was the reporter that like right. followed them around meatloaf was their bus driver guys i know meatloaf was so their great. bus driver yeah, that's right. like, Come on. <laughs> and he made meatloaf jokes throughout it. Yeah. Oh, it was just so good. People forget. It was great. And the end of it, do you remember the end where um, oh, they went on the stage, credits I start remember. rolling? The oh, credits yeah. start rolling. And then they pop back and they're like, hey, are you still sitting there? Why are you still sitting there? Oh, are you wondering what happened to the bomb on the bus? And then it like <laughs> cuts to the bomb exploding and that's how it ends. And I was like, I forgot this is that great. part. Because there was a bomb on the bus, guys. It it was crazy. It's a crazy movie, but it's so good. I remember it's dry clean only, Melanie. Yeah. <laughs> After they were tossed into the Thames or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the reason that came up, I was telling Jess, I can quote Spice World for days. But what I read earlier in the week, I may not be able to tell you about. So that's where my brain is. <laughs> yeah. my I, and, and I was telling Kristen that we read a book called Paul is Dead, and it's about um paul mccartney being dead um which was a big thing back in 1969 that we will get into when we review the book but people actually around the world this is when of course the beatles were the biggest thing ever and uh people actually thought paul was dead and that they had found a replacement for him and um I had a, a whole, I have everything memorized because I was a 10 year old and I had a folder on it. And um, I, I have actually, I brought in all the albums so I can show them real quick to just show you all what the conspiracy theories were. And um, it was a big deal for like six months that Paul was actually dead. And, um, and, and I was saying to Kristen, that's what's in my head instead of what I read earlier this week, like a good book like Steeple. Um, I <laughs> I can't, I'm gonna have to look at it to, to remind me, it's, it's Good Girl versus Bad Girl. Oh, it's by John Allison, that's right, the mm -hmm. Days dude. That's all right. Then we have Bruce and Iku, Jesse Say What, Kenny Crayley, Joe Goose, thank you for it showing up to the chat. Indie Comics. Ket Kettles Indie Comics. You're good about uh, writing me on Instagram too. Ket Kettle, Kettle. I don't know if the J is silent or not. Uh, but thank you for coming to the show where we will uh, give our opinion on five different books that we each chose. And we had a, compl <laughs> a complaint that said, oh, thanks, Harley background looks great. Thank you, MG81. <laughs> Um, we had a complaint that says, if you're both doing just five books, that's half the amount of books that uh, um, you used to review, which is true. We used to do four books each and give you eight books, and now we're just giving you two opinions on five books. So if, if you'd rather we went back to the old way where we each reviewed our own books, I don't think we care. Do we care? I don't think we care. Oh, we could always do like, you know, stagger we them. We do two shows a month, right? Like, yeah, we can. I don't we know. What do you guys think? What, what do people watching think? Yeah, we can alternate them and do four a piece because Kristen's are always different than mine, and you get so many different choices. Um, so maybe uh, we should do it every other time. That'd be good. 
this is at least good for like quarantine time because it's it hurts your wallet a little less if we're only talking about five books <laughs> right <laughs> you're not going to be super tempted just a little tempted yeah exactly uh happy fourth from brooklyn brooklyn what up brooklyn um so uh okay let's see we were talking about spice world so now i'm only thinking about a spice world <laughs> Um, we can do an hour in Spice World. I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I should get my daughter in here. She would love to talk about Spice World over there. Um, uh, let's it's see. funny. We always talk about out of print books. That DVD now is so out of print. Oh, it is. Yeah, thankfully I have it. But <laughs> if I was looking for it, oof, it's bad. Like the last oh. time I checked, at least, maybe it maybe it fluctuates, just like our market, right? But the last time I looked, I mean, you have to pay a crazy amount for that DVD. Oh, so it's on, it was on DVD, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, I seem to recall that was around second grade for Kelly, which made her seven, which made it 1998-ish. Is that about right? Uh, no, it was the 90s for sure. Uh, didn't I say 1998? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I heard 88. And I was like, no, that's not right. Yeah. No, that sounds right. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think so, it started on VHS. And I think okay. years later, it came out on DVD. And now they're oh. like, we're not printing that again. And I want a Blu-ray. So <laughs> right. I'm out of luck. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Um, so what would you like to start with on our review? Um, uh, do we Do we want to start with your uh beatles Paul dissertation Edmund? yeah why don't we do that you already teased it sure yeah uh, and here's uh lewis popping in for one second just to bash me and then he ditches out just loses track of his decades <laughs> easily because he's been around for so many and i don't think he spelled loses right you ah. um that's true i have been around for so many and I do lose track of my decades. And the way I tell uh, time in that time period is how old my daughter is and what grade she was in. That's how I figure it out. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, and Jesse said it was 97. So you were like almost right on, okay. that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, well the book we're talking about, let me see if I can pull it up because I did an awful lot on Hoopla. I don't know about Kristen. I did, I did the same books that you did. Oh, okay. This one is called <laughs> The End, stupid thing. Okay, done. So, <laughs> I'm getting uh, the marked ready, so at least we have that. It says resume, but then, okay, wait, pages. Okay, I'll go to, the, there it is. Paul is dead. When the Beatles lost McCartney. Um, so, this is done by a couple of guys that I hadn't heard of, Paulo Baron, Ernesto Carbonetti. I, I like the art. Um, here it stars, tells you who the um, players are in it, besides the Beatles, their managers and advisors and stuff. And um, it does have, I thought the art was interesting and I like the paneling and the colors and he got he captured the um, he captured the faces of the Beatles. Uh, I thought really well. Yeah, I agree. They looked like who they're supposed to look like. Yeah. Um, but my gripe with the book is that it's really it really doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay, that's what you thought too? Yeah, nothing, I felt like nothing happened. If we didn't already know who these people were in real life, we wouldn't have any connection to them. Right. You know, it, it was very, it's a super quick read. If you guys have Hoopla and you're interested, um, maybe it's worth a check out. I don't know that it's worth your money, honestly, but um, not for me at least. I'm glad I didn't pay for it. But uh, yeah, I just felt like there was zero character development there was no real story. No. And again, if we didn't already know who they were and we didn't care about the Beatles, there would be nothing there. Um, it really fell flat for me. Yeah, I thought so too. There, it just said that there was um, the 
Paul was dead. He wrapped his car around a tree, which was the story at the time, and that they groomed a successor for him, and they that looked like him, and they stuck him in there, and that was it. Yeah, and and then it ended, guys. <laughs> it was just like, oh, what did I just read? Uh, she's right. It is. Uh, uh, Kristen's right. It is a fast read. Um, very fast. Yeah, because there's nothing going on. That's right. Because <laughs> there's there's barely dialogue because nothing really happens, and it's quite short. Um. So let me just. Yeah. So we didn't really care for this book. Uh, there's somebody from London. How's it going, London? Um. The story was this was back in '69, I believe that he wrapped his car around a tree and that there were all kinds of hints in their songs and in their albums that that wasn't the real Paul McCartney, that that was um, a replacement. Um, there's, um, so let me, I, I will make this quick because I realize not everybody is into the Beatles as I am, but one of the um, clues was the Abbey Road cover and it's supposed to be, if I recall correctly, this is supposed to resemble something like an Italian funeral pr procession with the corpse being barefoot, which Paul is barefoot. And here in the background, the car says 28 if. He would have been 28 if he had lived. So that's a clue there. And then on the back, if you connect the dots up here, it says three beetles. I can't do it because of the mirroring thing, but this makes a three. So three Beatles. So there's your Abbey Road clue. Um, on There's a ton on Sergeant Peppers, especially on this cover. Uh, this guy is looking down on Paul. Um, the, the Beatles have, uh, it's a left-handed guitar here which is he was a left-handed bass player. So he this is supposed to represent his grave. Um, somebody's got, oh, um, somebody's got his hand over Paul's head, which is a sign of death in some culture. I can't remember all these cultures, but they pulled from like the Hindi culture and Tibet and Canada and all these different cultures because um, here is, Okay, wait. Oh, here in, he's in the inside and it's he's wearing a patch that says OPD and in a Canada, apparently that stands for officially pronounced dead. And on the day in the life thing, um, the great song, uh, he blew his mind out in a car that was supposed to refer to Paul because he, he uh, blew his mind out in a car and you can see that it came with cutouts that I cut out as a 10 year old. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, the white album, if you on a revolution number nine, which is an unlistenable sonic experiment by, I think primarily John, but if you, but I had at the time a turntable and I do now have a manual turntable where you could play it backwards. And if you play it, the when he says number nine, number nine, if you tur play it backwards, it says, turn me on, dead man. Turn me on, dead man. So that was supposed to be a clue. <laughs> um, Stra Strawberry Fields Forever, at the end of a song, John saying, I buried Paul. And John said, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm very bored. But if you listen to it, he's saying, I'm very, I buried Paul. And that was on, I think, Strawberry Fields Forever. Um, and he's wearing the walrus costume, which is a, a sign of death uh, in some culture. Uh, and I was 10 years old, so I took it seriously, okay? Don't, don't, <laughs> don't be too tough on me. Oh, and here, um, there's tons of references in here. Um, he's wearing a black, oh, here he's wearing a black corsage, meaning death, while the others have red ones. And uh, glass onion, 
has a, a lyric in it from John that says, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. Um, and that was supposed to suggest that walrus, the walrus um, uh, representing death was Paul. And it started out because um, a DJ uh, matched vocal tracks from like 1965 Paul to 1968 Paul and they didn't match. And so it exploded from there. It was like front page news in the United States. And I'm sure it must have been in Britain back then for like six months. Um, and people actually took it seriously. You can see I took it seriously, but I was 10. <laughs> There were adults that took it seriously. Um, so when you look back now, do you think they really played into it? I'm sorry? When you look back at it now, do you think they really played into this whole thing? The Beatles? Yeah. Um, or do you think people just went nuts with the possibilities? I think, I think sort of both. I remember that Life magazine, which was a big magazine then, and of course doesn't exist now because magazines don't, published an interview with him and he said, it's all bloody stupid. I'm right here I'm on my farm <laughs> with my wife and kids. What are you talking about? And he just said, it's ridiculous. But people were like, oh, that's his, his, uh, the duplicate saying that. Um, so <laughs> I, I think they sort of, it, it made their record sales explode at that point. They didn't have anything going on record wise, uh, you know, and they didn't perform live anymore. So, their record sales went up and so they didn't play it down except that Paul came out and said, this is stupid. I'm, I'm alive and well, and, and this is ridiculous. So, um, and I definitely did play it backwards. Uh, <laughs> duck collector. I a hundred percent played it backwards. I had a friend of mine, he and I were super into the Beatles and we would get our turntables and play it backwards. Um, and listen to it say, turn me on dead man, which j <laughs> who knows what that even means. So <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> that was my life as a 10 year old. And I appreciate Joe Chip saying this <laughs> because I'm into history lessons. I love listening to Jess talk about his youth. Thank you. I appreciate your indulgence in letting me talk about it. <laughs> if that happened now, like people would go crazy on like forums dedicated to it, whole websites. It would be I, nuts. You know, that's that's interesting. I wonder I wonder if it could be pulled off today. I wonder if you could pull something off like that today because there's so I, I mean, this was back when there was three channels and one newspaper and, right. that, and magazines are all, that's only the way, the only way you got your information. Well, and they would be followed by paparazzi nonstop now. That's yeah, for sure. Well, Candace brings that up right here. Yeah. 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 I don't think that could happen today. Um, I, but um, yeah, it was one of those things that was just right for the time period. And it was, I don't think they cooked it up, but I don't. I think they just thought of it. It was funny. Mm -hmm. They thought it, they got a they got amusement out of it, except for Paul. Uh, <laughs> the other three thought it was funny and just let it go. So there is your historic Jess's history lesson for the day. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and that's what's in my Great. head. If you ask me what happened in Hickman's Fantastic Four, <laughs> I remember the body of Galactus was turned into something, and that's all I remember. And There's a lot of fighting. The books ever, and I can't remember more than that. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Oh, the moral of that story is we didn't like this book. Still, <laughs> <laughs> all right. See, my maybe my uh, history lesson was more interesting than the book. It was actually <laughs> like, see, that's the thing. They could have done it where they just like went into like how the conspiracy started, like what the clues were. They could have done all that instead of just kind of a fictionalized, was he dead? Wasn't he? Where nothing really happened. Yeah. If they had put all those clues in there and said why the world cared and how right. they believed it, that would have been an interesting story. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think a broad, range of people would be interested in that story mm -hmm. because it tells a a, a story a tale of what things were like back then and mm -hmm. um i think a lot of people young people older people 
would have been interested in how the conspiracy theory got put together. But this, uh, this was a missed opportunity. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay. Let's talk about something we like. How about the marked? Oh, did, yes. I'm very interested in this because this is something that I recommended for once. And let me pull it up. Do you have it? I have it up. It? If you want me to hold yeah. up my iPad, we'll see if this looks all right. Yeah, there's that the looks cover. Fun. I just read about this on, on IST and it sounded interesting to me. Let me see if I can get to the back. So you can't just look at the back of your iPad and, uh, yeah, and read right. what it was about. Yeah, I'm like flipping through it just to get to some art, but yeah, which it's kind of glary. I apologize. I have one light yeah. in here. So the marked may look like cool influencers, but beneath the designer clothes, their bodies are tattooed with the magical glyphs of an ancient order that secretly protects the world from evil forces. After years of no new occult threats, the marked use their tattooed powers solely for the pursuit of pleasure. That is until a young woman called Liza creates a dangerous new form of hybrid sorcery. The party is over for the marked. You'll believe in magic, terrifying, soul destroying magic. <laughs> oh, you'll believe in magic, terrifying, soul destroying magic. I misread that. Sorry. Um, the, um, that uh, art, I think, I loved this art to start out with. I really thought it was intricate and clean and really pretty. Um, I. I thought the art was fantastic. What did you think of it? You know, at first I didn't love it. Well, the face, yeah, you can look at her face right there and they, they are a little bit different. Yeah. Faces. The, faces, the faces were really like weirding me out at first, but then I don't know if you can see this good enough when they would do the tattoos and the glyphs and everything and the uh, creatures that like, you know, jumped out of their body. Um, yeah. That's what made me really be like, okay, this art's really, it is really good. The faces are just weird. Um, yeah, but but I did ultimately end up liking it. Yeah, I got used to it. The faces kind of remind me of like uh, video game art. Oh, yeah. You know, like it was a certain kind of like 3D-ish. And then when you add like these, these magical elements to it, it, it all felt like it could be a video game to me. Yeah. Um and they did try and change her look when she first joined the society, but it was still that sort of round faced battle angel Alita type of look. Mm -hmm. um, I probably shouldn't show all this. <laughs> You'll get the video taken down, but uh, that's a good. Oh, uh, that's a good I don't think that's the problem. I, I, um, it, it involved two things I love occult women. I don't know why. <laughs> I like John Constantine, but I, for some reason, I really dig women. Um, I don't even know if they are considered witches. They're wielders of magical glyphs that are tattooed on their bodies, and they can call on them to um, protect the world from evil. And um, I just read about it and said, okay, Hoopla has it. Let's give it a, a go. And uh, I loved it. I am. I really want a second volume. It it, it ended um, fine. The story got wrapped up. There's there's certainly yeah. plenty of other places the characters can go. Yeah, and that that ending. Obviously, we won't give that away for anyone wanting to uh, read it. But that was a good ending. That was a really good ending. They wrapped up a big arc that I felt like didn't drag on, and it wasn't too quick. It was like concise and kind of perfect in what they showed. Uh, and it made me even the ending, even though it wrapped up nicely, I was like, yeah, what's what's going to happen now? Right. Like, I want to know what happens in the next one. So I'll definitely be getting the next one. It it was a fun ride, a really fun ride. It was nonstop. It was one of those that like you didn't feel like you didn't fall asleep, you know, <laughs> like I was able to easily like consume it in one sitting and be done. And yeah, yeah it was really fun. Yeah. And I just like the whole concept of um uh, there's there's a leader. There is one one guy involved, but it's mostly women, and it's in New York City. Um, and I like the concept of uh, they find. Um, I thought this was the best part of the writing to me was how they found the uh, new recruit that they got, 
was it's one of those ads that you see in comics or uh, magazines. Um, can you can you draw this and what do you see? You know, and it's a woman's portrait and you're supposed to draw the woman's portrait and see if you have any talent for drawing. And the woman, instead of drawing the woman's portrait, drew this wild glyph thing. She said, yeah, that's what I see. And she sent it in and that's how she became a candidate. Uh, and, and it turned out she had these powers and they put a glyph on her back. And I, this is one of my favorite books so far what are we in july so i can say it's one of my favorite books for the first six months of the year it's was, high praise sorry that's high praise <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you you felt it was a, a good read too yeah i thought it was really fun uh i thought you know we've both read i think a lot of magic books and this was another unique spin on it i i felt like i hadn't seen something hmm. used like that with the tattoos and the glyphs and what the creatures that like came out of all of it i thought it was really uniquely done and something that i hadn't seen before so that's saying something when it's hard to make up magic now right it's so much has been done but i haven't seen that at yeah. least that's a good point, that this was something we hadn't seen before. That, that may be why it appealed to us so much, because we hadn't seen it before. Yeah, um, and there was a, a whole government element that was really interesting throughout oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because uh, the marked is like a kind of a cult of magic people, and one of them strays away and kind of gets captured by the government and then starts working with them, and that's a whole part of this whole arc. Um, that was really interesting. Whenever you get government involved in anything, it becomes something different, right? Yeah, but that wasn't overplayed. It was like, yeah, it, it wasn't. It was like the government wasn't necessarily. Well, yeah, no, the government was. There was some. Yeah, the government. I think. Um, yeah, no, the government wasn't good. No, it, there, there was some shady stuff happening there for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say it seems like the main guy in charge let things get out of hand, but. Yeah. When, when things were under his control, um, uh, yeah, no, the government yeah. wasn't getting this part. They wanted to weaponize it. For sure. And they were just fine with killing animals. So that was sad. <laughs> I was going to bring that up. There's, yeah. there's no heads up. Yeah, heads up. But there's no, it's implied that they. Right. Thankfully, they, you don't see it. Right. But it's certainly implied that uh, they kill monkeys for fun and uh, dogs so yeah. if anybody has a problem with that even being implied implied yeah. rather um, you, don't, you don't see it at all but yeah right. it is implied because this hybrid magic that they create like really heightens uh the bloodthirstiness of a person and makes them especially cruel yeah and they and they want to test subjects so they brought in animals yeah. unfortunately um when they brought out the puppy i was like if they show this i'm oh, done with this book i was, I was like my done. ipad in the garage and <laughs> I, and I was just gonna chuck it if they did that yeah, so thankfully unlike other books uh like you know a cat woman's tale the dc uh, the graphic novel for uh young people don't read it because they do show that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that one avoid because they show the animal cruelty this this one they don't so that's much better yeah and lloyd wong has a good question um the story's complete in this book, um, but I, I feel like the way it ended, it felt like the author wanted yeah, to tell more stories. It says volume one, so yeah, I assume it's still going. Um, we don't keep track with floppies, so you know, is it? But, but it does oh, say yeah. volume one, and though that arc is complete, though, so it's one of those. I know a lot of people want to wait for the full thing to come out. Sometimes I think it's a good one that you can jump in, and your arc is done. Like you're not really left being like, what yeah. happened with this thing or this thing. It's just a matter of like what's going to happen that makes you want to come back, right. which is really nice because that doesn't usually happen with volume ones, you know. But it was it was nice, concise, and it was done, so you can jump in. Yeah, that actually made it even more perfect. The, the whole story was in that, and you can look forward to more stories, or you can just be happy with this, which yeah. is perfect. And Kenny got a new iPad. Nice, nice. And uh, let's see. Yeah, Joe Joe Goose is right. They look like brat dolls. They did. That's true. <laughs> but you got, I kind of got. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 
I, I kind of got used to it and I was just like, eh, not everything. I, I don't mind new art styles and it was believable enough that it sucked me into the story. Yeah. I'd rather sharp, different looking characters than screechy, scratchy, weird looking characters that pull me out of the story. So <laughs> I was okay. I'm not a fan of screechy, scratchy art. Yeah, and like you said, I think you get used to it more than anything because it did bother me at first. I was like, "Ugh, what is with these faces?" <laughs> but you get used to it. Yeah, yeah. So that I I need to uh, now I need to somehow get this into my Goodreads. <laughs> somehow you have to do that manually, huh? I mean, I did it as I went. It was easy. <laughs> uh, what'd you do? How'd you get it from Hoopla? Would, uh, did you just type in on Goodreads that you read it? Yeah, I okay. just found it on Goodreads, uh, put on my currently reading, and once I was done, I hit finished. And then I rated it, and it was there. Yeah, you make it so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I mean, I'm still, I'm more of a barcode scanner, so. Yeah. Which is good, because I used to be pencil and paper last year, but you got mm -hmm. me into the barcode business this year. Well, and if you do it as you go, you don't ever forget. Right. right. That's so I, I literally tell myself, I'm like, okay, I'm about to read something. I have to put it on Goodreads. So I've just right. gotten to the habit where I do it automatically. Yeah. See, Lewis McGregor's not even in the chat anymore. He just popped in, made <laughs> it you and, and then left. left. Yeah. Freaking guy. <laughs> uh, okay. So we love that book. Well, I love that book and you. What? And I enjoyed it. Okay. And you enjoyed it. Okay, yeah. I, really... I would not put it in my top things. But okay. I thought it was a fun ride, and I enjoyed it. I think it's worth your hoopla credit. Mm -hmm. Here's a question, and I don't think I have. Have any of you read the Love series by Magnetic Press? I do you know, own a lot of books by Magnetic Press, but I don't. I'm not familiar with the Love series. I'm not either. I haven't read enough by them, honestly. I read some, but not enough. They have a lot of good stuff. I've yeah, read their books are really good, nice. Yeah, have really nice books. I've read mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff from them. I've read more good stuff from them. Well, Humanoids puts out an awful lot, and I don't want to lump them both in together because they're indie publishers. Um, I, yeah, hum I've read tons of good Humanoid stuff too, but um, <laughs> that would be me, Candace. <laughs> Christmas we'll just have to get on here and go through it together at some yeah, point. Chris is to do a Goodreads tutorial video for the tech challenge. I, <laughs> I, I'm at the point where I think I could do that. I know what she's talking about. I just, it's not. A it's not ingrained in it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it's been a habit for me for years now. Right. You and know, so I don't even think that. about it. It's like, I feel like I can't be reading it something if it's not on my currently reading shelf. Hmm. It's just not speaking, possible. Speaking of Goodreads, how are you doing on your challenge? Oh, let's see. What a good <laughs> question. <laughs> Let me check. All right. So my uh, goal this year was 400 books. 400. Okay. 400. And I'm at 310. I'm oh doing great. Oh, my gosh. You're crushing I'm doing it. great. I'm killing it. 77% done with my goal. I didn't expect it. I was like, wow. 400. That's too much. But I did it anyway. And no. Nope. Killing it, killing it. You are totally killing it. <laughs> and that's another great thing, right? Because I can just look there. I'll never forget what I read this year. It'll be there forever. You know, as long as Goodreads is around. But it's, you know, popular. So let's hope. <laughs> yeah. You can also save your stuff. So if you want to save it as like an Excel spreadsheet, you can. Which is I'm, nice. Yeah, I don't do Excel spreadsheets. Uh, well, but you can save it as whatever you, do, you want. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I know some people like Excel. Well, I could. That's this is interesting. My Goodreads goal is hampered by me reading a bit more prose novels this year. Those definitely take longer. Yeah, I have some of those in there, but comics definitely help. People who have from Justin, people who have some tattoos would like the mark. Probably where I'm at, if there's a comic shop, usually there's a tattoo parlor around. As a matter of fact, Third Eye Comics, their previous location, did have a tattoo parlor right in front of it. Nice. And now they don't because they moved to a much bigger space. Um, so what book would you like to cut? You choose the next one you want to talk about. 
Okay, I brought up Family Tree already. Oh, you did? So oh, we yeah, can do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, I didn't even know this was out. I'll read about this. This was, this is another amazing book. My only complaint is that there's not more. There needs to be more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I 100% yeah. agree. Um, cause, because it's a Jeff Lemire book, and it totally caught me by surprise that he um, had a book out. And I, of course, you know Lemire even better than I do. Um, but this is <laughs> this is an amazing um, concept. Um, Let's get in here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, what, who did the art? I just passed the front page. Hold on. Um, is that Phil Hester? Is that right? Phil Hester. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jeff Lemire wrote this. Phil Hester drew it. I really enjoyed the art. It is an image book. Uh, when an eight-year-old girl, be <laughs> this is just funny, when an eight-year-old girl begins to transform into a tree, her single mom, troubled brother, and possibly insane grandfather embark on a bizarre and heart-wrenching odyssey across the back roads of America, desperately searching for a way to cure her horrifying transformation before it's too late. Now, that, that doesn't sound like much of a book, but it really is because there's um she, somehow this girl starts transforming into a tree it turns out it happened to her father and her father just left the family um yeah, and, there's her arm right there uh, yeah and they, with some twigs sticking out of it and they haven't recovered from her father leaving the family but he turned into a tree yeah there she is like sprouting <laughs> a branch from her backside yeah but you um, can't feel nice and I generally am not a huge fan of Phil Hester's art, but I, I liked it in this. I thought he yeah. did a really good job in this. And the grandfather is the dad's father, and it does not have good uh, relationship with this family. But he knows about uh, the father turning into a tree, and now the daughter's turning into a tree. There's the grandfather. Who's awesome. And uh, there's a cult or government agency or some kind of weirdos that are organized enough that they want to either uh, capture or kill, I can't remember, um, these uh, these tree creatures. Um, yeah, and this is the dad of the girl. Right. When he had completely turned. Yeah, and it, it, it sounds odd, it is odd, but it's a great, <laughs> as usual, with Jeff Lemire, it has lots of heart, lots of human emotion attached to it, lots of familial bonding and um, distrust of the grandfather, having to trust him because he may have the answers. Um, uh, this was a really good recommendation uh, by you. Uh, I, I didn't even know anything about it. Um, and when you, when you look at the blurb that says a girl's turning into a tree, it's it's an odd blur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, but it but it was really good. I really am looking forward to finding out that's the sign of good writing. I'm looking forward to finding out more about this girl and what the heck's going on with her turning into a tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of the and it's like you said at the beginning, the only downfall is there aren't more volumes right now like yeah. we're just waiting because you'll get to the end and you'll be like what's happening like <laughs> we need more but that is definitely a good sign of great storytelling it is very odd it's weird but it it i was immediately like not even thinking about the tree anymore you know it wasn't like oh that's weird it was just like oh no she's turning into a tree let's help her what's happening yeah um i you have to have different ideas, but it's not enough to have a different idea. To make it work, you got to get the reader invested. And I would say we were both invested in this family enough to really want to know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know what his plans are for this book, but I'm, I'm as hooked on this as I am Black Hammer and Gideon Falls. Um, Definitely. I, I want to know this is an odd concept, but it worked and I, and I really want to know more. That's exactly how I felt. So it's, it's another great Lemire book. This is the All book right. I thought you were talking about. Justin Baird brought <laughs> it up. I also have read that though. 
You have read it? I have, yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know what made me... I must have read... Did somebody... Did you recommend this to me or did... I, I, what, I don't remember. Maybe I... I, liked it. I don't think I did because I thought it was fine. <laughs> I thought oh. it was going to be better than it was. Um, oh. okay. It was a good concept, but... Here's a book uh, that I ordered. Have you heard of this book? Of You're course. Ready? Of course. <laughs> oh, Come on. Alien cat. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. We could do that next time if you want. Uh, okay. Strayed? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I don't know the answer to the... Oh, whoops. Uh, I don't know the answer of when the corrected volume four is coming out. I think the fact that I Gideon Falls is one of those things that I read as soon as it comes out, uh, as opposed to pretty much every other book that waits until 2025 for me to read. Um, so I'm going to download it on Comixology, whatever that issue is, so I know um, what's going on. But yeah, the whole issue doesn't have word. The whole last issue in volume four doesn't have word words in the word bubble so how does that get through like that is so weird right <laughs> someone had to notice that at some point yeah it's here somewhere i don't um i don't know it's odd i haven't i mean i've seen um anybody that wants to read ghost tree beware of the ending okay i want to read it it's on my uh it's on on my um stack here uh i don't know quality control you know you'd think there'd be a proofreader yeah i understand it if it doesn't happen in a word bubble or a page yeah but, but a whole, whole issue, issue. That's crazy that's very strange yeah i don't i don't think this is something they can blame on covid this was human error mm -hmm. yeah this was uh Definitely a mistake. And actually, I wanted to check this um, question out. Joe Jenkins, have either of you checked out St Stepan Shay? Wait, I've got it right here. <laughs> you wrote it down. <laughs> I did. Stepan Shayich, Shayich, new Harley Quinn digital series, black, white, and red. I have not. Um, can you tell me more about it, uh, Joe Jenkins? Is is there much? available and where do i go to find out more about it i'd like to know more about that um because he was a very interesting person to interview and i fully support all the stuff he's done i, w I wish he'd done more stuff i think he's um i think he's got so much work that he's actually backed up and and can't can't do what he wants to do which is I guess a good problem to have, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, let's see. Uh, that leaves us. That's it for our hoopla books. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. I hoopla the heck out of it there. I mean, I think we have to go with Steeple now. Steeple by John Allison. Is Giant Days your one of your all-time favorite books or your all-time favorite book? I would say my all-time favorite book. Okay. Oh, okay, that's well, big. Okay, no. Hold on. Uh, my all-time favorite book is Essex County. Oh, yeah, yeah, my yeah, all-time yeah. favorite series, I think, is Giant Days. Okay, you There's can have both. Yeah, I can have both. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you want to, um, I, um, do you want to... Um, oh, yeah, with a four-page epilogue story. I forgot about that. Um, I can... You want you want to read the back? You're good at reading the backs. <laughs> okay, <you can> <laughs> I think this higher. is a back reader. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> uh, a supernatural tale of friendship, the devil, and moral gray areas. Two women with wildly different worldviews become unlikely friends as they navigate the supernatural happenings in a sleepy coastal parish. This is um, in the UK, and soon find themselves forced to choose sides in the war between good and evil facing demons, curses, and a miniature rapture. Um, yeah, this this book stars, uh, the, the first protagonist is a uh, female uh, clergyman, I guess you'd call her, 
she's going to be um, taking over a church in um, a, a church that's sort of got a bad reputation. It, uh, it's got a, a, the main the main priest, not priest, the main clergyman in the church, like regularly, <laughs> regu often fights um, creatures from hell. Like yeah. they come out at night and this guy physically fights them and he needs some backup help. And he gets this kind of um, uh, tiny woman who um, is uh, up for the challenge, uh, seems kind of, um, what does she seem kind of? She seems sort of plain, but um, she may- a, a good person. Yeah. You know, she just wants to help people. Right. I'm trying to find uh, him fighting one of these creatures. Here we go. Yeah, that Here's was a good a eyeball creature. creature. He regularly fights these kinds of things and it's taking a toll on him physically. Um, Which and, he calls like the devil's creatures. Right. Um, and he, she makes friends at the local, I think, coffee shop. Let's see. With uh, a woman. Yeah, it was a bar. A bar. Yeah. It was a mm -hmm. pub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, with a bartender who um, worships the Church of Satan, um, and they strike up. There she is. They yeah. strike up a friendship, and um, their friendship is very um, unlikely, but it's fun to watch it uh, grow. Yeah, they feel like total opposites. Well, yeah, one worships God and one yeah. worships Satan. <laughs> But they get along great. Yeah, they do. They they form a real friendship, and um, I I enjoyed their friendship a lot. Um, I I'm not sure that I was on board with the ending. Um, because well, well, I don't want to give the ending away mm -hmm. because of um, you know reasons. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, but um, I, 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 what did you think of the ending? Well, about here's the what deal. Happened between the two of them, and here's the deal with Steeple, right? I read this in singles. I bought the singles. I never, like, I rarely ever get singles. I wanted to support John Allison because mm -hmm. I love John Allison, uh, as we know. Uh, and unfortunately, getting the singles of something is the only thing that really, really, really helps a book, right? Mm. So, uh, and we can buy this and that of course supports the people, but at this point, like you've already done what you can do with the, uh, you know, singles rule the market still. So yeah. I wanted to support it. I wanted to read it as it was, it was coming out. I don't do that typically with anything. Um, so I read it in singles. It didn't have the epilogue in the singles. Oh. So that li little bit at the end, even though the epilogue was quite short, can you imagine it ending before that? Cause that's how I felt. <laughs> reading the singles oh, and i was okay. like oh no <laughs> like so, but i knew he was writing more which i guess was this epilogue in this um and it still does end where i think if this sells well enough there's going to be more okay um so he was at least putting there may be more than this online because i know he was writing more and I think he was posting it online. I have not looked into that. So I could be wrong, but I know at least this epilogue really does help. If, yeah. if someone watching happened to read this in singles like me, you need the epilogue. I think it helps. Um, so I, I liked the ending, but it was quite open-ended and I'm going to like it more if there's more to this. I agree. Which I, I think he would like to do. Yeah, but it did seem like it was one of those. If they allow me to write more, I'll have to do that. Who put this out? Oh, Dark Horse. Okay. Dark Horse. Yeah. So hopefully there's more, and then I'm gonna like it even more if there's more to it. I still yeah. really enjoyed it, but it was one of those things where I'm like, oh, but I need a whole other volume after that ending. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good start, and we needed more. Yes, I totally agree. Okay. So I think you can read this and enjoy it, but you're probably going to, I think anyone would feel like we're feeling right now, which is, this is great and I need more of it. That's how I felt. And uh, to your knowledge, have any more singles come out or is it just this? 
No more singles, but I think the last I heard he was writing more, at least for online, like digital stuff. Because Giant Day started as a, a webcomic, oh. and I th- I don't know if this started as a webcomic, but I think he may be posting more. So I have to look into that. I'm not positive, here's but... A, here's something from Chris Brogan. There's more. Okay. Great. There's more steeple online. John said he hopes they will ask for more. Okay, perfect. So, yay, I'm going to go read more of this. Okay. Um, and hopefully there's a whole other volume coming. Hopefully this sells well. As in, everyone watching should go buy it and yeah. give us more. I dug it. I, I yeah. did dig it. Um, and, and you're right to point out the epilogue helped a lot. Uh, oh my I had forgotten about yeah. the epilogue because I only read it yesterday. So I had already forgotten about the epilogue. Uh, so definitely helped. helped. You uh, reminded me about that. Um, yeah, uh, I think we really needed the epilogue, and especially it, when I read it in singles, I was like, "Oh man, no, wait, there has to be. You have to be writing more." So thankfully, there's more here because <laughs> yeah, I really I, liked it. I look at my Giant Days collection, and I've only got half the trades. I also need to get the trades because I I got those hardcovers right, and that's only a little part of it. I know, so yeah. I need to get the trades. Yeah, I think I need to get. Are they up to fourteen volumes of the trade? You know, I know I, they're up at least to twelve. I think they're up to twelve. Okay, and or the thirteenth came out, but I think the last one's coming out in October. So maybe at that point, when the new we'll, one comes out, we'll have everything. Yeah. And then we can talk about it in full. That would be fun. We should do a special episode on just giant days. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about there. There is. Like, it's a nice full adventure. Yeah, that'd be good to read all because they're not, uh, they're easy to read, they're fun to read, they're interesting to read, and they're not really long. So it doesn't seem overwhelming to think about 12 or 13 trades. Oh, yeah. It's not like 12 or 13 trades of something like Chris Claremont's X-Men where it's super dense and, you know, while it might be good. Um, it's going to take forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I felt like Siebel was the same. I think he's really good at just writing something that's easy to read and breezy and you're interested in the characters. Because this went by really quick for me. In yeah. a good way. Uh, Mn40 has a comment. Jess, was it you that said someone scolded you in the comments for liking Authority Ellis Omni? I thought you said that this past week. Perhaps it was someone else. Uh, you mean because of Warren Ellis and his recent um, uh, his recent admin, uh, admission to? I, I actually don't even know what he said. I uh, I, I don't think his I recent bad behavior. Okay. Was it was it underage girls or just girls that he took advantage of? Uh, it was young women in the industry. Oh, in the industry? Yeah. Okay, they weren't fans, but they were uh, female professionals trying to get uh, a start, and he would yeah, take the, advantage of them? Yeah, that's the big problem, right? There's a whole power dynamic that he... Yeah. And then he wanted nude pictures, and he... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there was a whole... <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah, I it, it went pretty deep. Um, I don't, I don't recall getting scolded for liking authority, um, on, on my YouTube channel in the comment section. I don't remember that. And I don't remember that in the chat or on the page. I don't think anybody's called me out for that. I, and this is where, I mean, eventually Omni Bros is going to have Kristen and Maddie on and we'll talk about. Um, the whole issue because it is such a multi-layered it's not only multi-layered but I mean it's it goes out it's got it goes down and then it spreads out so I I can't change my feelings about liking authority or planetary or any of his other stuff um, I don't Which would be crazy if anyone expected you to do that yeah I don't have you, to- you've already read it yeah, I've already read it. I can't. I, it's one of my favorite books ever. I can't change my feelings on it. I, um, I if he puts, I don't even know that he'll be allowed to put new stuff out. If he if he does, then you have your moral dilemma there. Do you support him by buying that? Um, or, yeah, do you support him by buying that? I I guess I don't know. That's what that's what was so interesting about the interview we did with Cy Spurrier, the tailor and I did. 
when we said, how do you feel about the industry now? And we met economically and he went, he took it a completely different direction and talked about the, the sexual harassment issue um, with no prompting from us. And then he asked us our opinion, which I was like, uh, nobody ever asked us our opinion. I, I don't know. He said, what do you guys, what do you guys think? And I'm like, uh, uh, so, um, but but um, that's what I thought was so interesting about the Scythe Spurrier interview was that his mind was already on it when we were wondering about like comic book stores closing and diamonds problems. He was completely thinking about something different and properly so, I think. Um, yeah, here's this. This may be what people do. I like his previous work. I just won't be supporting him going forward. Yeah. I, I guess that's up to everybody. And I think that um, we'll need to, um, we'll need to take it on a, on a artist by our creator by creator basis. Uh, Riley says, just assume everybody's done it. And we need to have people come out and say, I haven't done it because he's very cynical about it. He thinks everybody's done it. I, I hope for the best in people, I do <laughs> but too. I think it's just different now that we all know, right? It's one thing if you don't know, but we yeah. know now and money talks more than anything in our love of this hobby, right? Um, we, if we give people more opportunities by giving them our money, who are our problems and we know their problems, these aren't allegations with him. He admitted it. Right. Okay. You know, like in his apology, he, he didn't deny any of it. I don't think at all, um, unless I read it wrong. But so there's that. <laughs> I think that matters too. Um, I don't know the answer to this, Crazy Jane. Will DC allow him to continue with Batman's Grave? I, I don't know how, how you do that, but I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe he's on a contract. But yeah, we don't know what they're going to do. Sorry. We we can't predict any of that, right? Like, we know he was fired from one single I issue or something, right? And that's it. Yeah, I I don't know, um, but we will uh, talk about this more on an Omni Bros episode. I think not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday, and see if we can come to. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's not, uh, it's a very difficult thing and it's, it's, um, different than it was three years ago. If somebody had, uh, come up with these allegations and, or somebody admitted it, I, it was like a one-off almost back then, but they're rushing in now. And, um, I think more people are just talking about it I and mean, they're not only talking about it, but they're getting, they're actually getting listened to. I think that's a huge thing. That I think there, exactly were, there were probably people talking about this three years ago, but it doesn't mean we were paying attention to them and right. giving them any sort of credit for what they were saying. You know, times are changing. Right. That is exactly right. They're being listened to. And yeah. Because, the, you know, there were some other um, people that have come out with things about other people and they weren't listened to. They were, they talked back then. <laughs> they kept talking and they were never listened to. So I think there's been a lot of that. Here is uh, an answer. DC has already canceled his upcoming DC work. I, what I think, I don't, you know, I don't know. Do you even, do you even have somebody follow up? If he was, say he'd done two issues and it was a four issue series. Do you have somebody finish the series and then publish it? he still gets money from the published work or do you just outright cancel the whole thing and say, that's a, I don't know. Here's a good piece of advice from Kenny Crayley. I, I like that. Yeah. You can be better, do better. For everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, uh, yeah, it's been Justin. It's been this past these past two weeks have been just a cascade of people being accused, and their accusers have 
an extreme amount of credibility because there it's not like there's just one accuser there's like a lot of them with a lot of proof and and then other people backing them up saying yeah. they saw certain behaviors over years maybe they even knew about it and didn't say anything that's problematic in itself right right um but yeah there's been a whole lot um that's why i think it's good to talk about yeah, because I there's agree. people like there's people like justin like maybe he's not in the group right maybe he doesn't know from the group maybe he's not on a lot of people aren't on twitter which is understandable I'm not. i know you're not well but you're in a group that talks about it right yeah that's still social media. Uh, people say Twitter's a dumpster fire, fire. I think every form of social media, there's problem people, but then there's also great things like this stuff being talked about, giving people a voice who never had one. Yeah. And people are, yeah. Before we move on from this subject, uh, sort of concurrently to this subject, what did you think of the, the woman who was, I can't remember her name and I'm, I apologize. She was the uh, writing Batgirl and she didn't get included in the Batman summit. Mm -hmm. um, was that, uh, and I think that was her, her first book for DC. Do you feel that was just blatant sexism or blatant uh, not paying attention to the, to the young person? Um, was it just forgetfulness? I don't, I mean, she, she, I guess I have to go with what she felt. She felt she was being singled out as a woman for not, and, and not included in the Batman summit. Well, and I think that's easy to see from previous summits, right? Because we have details after this came out that previous summits, there are barely any women around. There's people, guys who are at these summits saying <laughs> they're just not here, right? Um, she said she was down the street from the summit. They didn't have to pay anything for her to get there. She could walk there. She even called them out on it and they still did not invite her. She was on a book at the time that was part of the Bat family. So I think everything to me leads to, yeah, they didn't want this woman there. Maybe it was because of her experience on top of that. We can't know what they were thinking. It just is not a good look. <laughs> I can tell you that much, right? It's not a good look on DC. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I as someone that. who has been like ignored uh, with certain things in work environments, uh, because I am a woman, and I know that because I look around the room and everybody else is a guy, right? Yeah. It seems likely this could very well happen, especially in comics. We know it's a male dominated industry still to this day. That's just facts. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, even in the group, we recently put up statistics where like a, a few percentages were like women, people in the group, right? And there's just oh, almost yeah. 5,000 people in the group. And it's like, oh, this is too bad. Because still to this day, I mean, you know, Maddie got a message where some guy was shocked he found a woman who read comics on the internet. So I just, it's still happening. So that yeah, I can totally believe <laughs> that this, that. yeah, this was like a sexist thing. He, oh, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a yay. I'm glad it was. Oh, I, what was oh I'm not even talking thing? about, she can talk about her own message. I just okay. know she said it okay. to me and I that's was like, fair. that's funny that people are still surprised by this. Yeah. Even okay. if it was a yay thing, <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. that's too bad. We can read comics too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this is exciting news to me. The uh, WB DC Films is going to do live action Zatanna. I am extremely excited about that because I love Zatanna. So Kenny, good job bringing that up. That is, I love Zatanna. So I can't wait to, um, I hope Paul Dini has something to do with it. Like he gets to write the script or something and, and not somebody else he has a really good feel for the characters so i'd love it if he was involved with it somehow uh and that leaves us with our last book the big one mine's naked <laughs> <laughs> uh somebody asked last time we were on for Kristen to review some of the marvel books that she has behind her 
And so this is the one we settled on, Deadpool Minibus 2. Um, do you want do you want me to read the back again while you show? Some oh, is there a nice back? Okay, good. Yeah. Oh yeah, you don't have the back. I, yeah. yeah, I have it somewhere, but yeah, <laughs> not near me. I'm one okay. of those guys that reads it with the dust jacket on. I know I'm a bad guy. Wait, really? With I the do. dust jacket? <laughs> what? I rarely do. I think to take the dust jacket off. How does that not bother you the whole time? <laughs> this is shocking. Really? I just uh, really? Of it. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 could, to, I could do that. Well, I guess in the past, I have started doing it with really big Omnis, but if they're thin Omnis, uh, I... Oh, I man. Know. Even if it's the thinnest book ever, I take that thing <laughs> off. It has to come off. <laughs> you, you're going to damage a, a dust jacket at some point. I know. You're right. And you're right. It. Yeah. You're 100% right. <laughs> I should, yeah, okay, that's right. Um, the Deadpool minibus rides again, and the journey starts right back at the beginning. In fact, just before, as a pro debut, Deadpool meets Cable again for the first time. Can Nathan and the team that will be X-Force save history from the meddling Merc with a mouth? Then it's time to let an Avenger aboard, but who brings the bow and arrow to a guns and swords fight? Hawkeye, that's who, and also Hawkeye. Will Clint Barton and Kate Bishop let Deadpool join in all their Team Hawkeye fun? The road gets a little bumpy when Wade has the best-selling idea. Inspired by Sun Tzu, he's writing in the book on war and actually engineering the ultimate conflict between Loki, Asgard, and the superheroes of Earth. That can't end well. Then there's a stop in a nightmare neighborhood where mankind survived a zombie holocaust only to fall prey to a plague of Deadpools. But in this world, can only one man rise up to save humanity when that man is Deadpool? Our final destination is Battle World, but the Beyonders, that's the Beyonders' original Battle World, and a story that has waited three decades to be told. Discover the pivotal role Wade Wilson played in the ultimate clash of good versus evil that was the Marvel superheroes Secret Wars. Are we there yet? <laughs> um, I tried to rush through to those as you talked about them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It worked. Um, just off the yeah, I know everybody's jamming me up now, probably from not taking my dust jacket off. <laughs> Good, you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy talk. <laughs> what kind of person are you? <laughs> Uh, I love Deadpool. Um, these are a collection of all the little mini series that came out over the course of a couple years. Um, I like some more than others. Not first of all, none of them make necessarily make sense to me, and Deadpool doesn't necessarily <laughs> make sense. Um, but I love him because it's funny. Uh, he breaks the fourth wall if he's written right. Um, he can be really amusing and interesting, and I am just a sucker. Deadpool is somebody that I am a sucker for, that I will uh, buy anything. I think he's he gets compared, or Harley Quinn gets compared to him as the fourth, uh, the, breaking the fourth wall a lot, but that's really, I think, where they're, I mean, she doesn't regenerate or is a merc with a mouth or anything, although she can be a psychotic killer, but, um, I, I think they're my two favorite characters, Deadpool and Harley Quinn, and I will read pretty much anything with them in it, on it, or about it. So um, uh, that's just my take on this was it was a ton of fun, um, ultimately meaningless maybe, except it's it was fun to reread. I had read it already and forgot it. So it was great to reread it. Um, it's, I, I just really enjoy it. It's what comics should be, just enjoyable and fun. Yeah, I thought, uh, I, I agree. I thought it was really fun. I did have a least favorite and a favorite, though. So my least favorite would have been Deadpool's Art of War. I found some of it to be a slog. Yeah. Uh, and it was the only time I felt like that throughout these. Uh, I was just, I felt like I was slogging through it. It was an entertaining idea, but I think it just went on too long. And, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, so and I like the art in it a lot actually, but that was my least favorite. And my favorite, let's find it, would definitely have to be. Mm -mm -mm, let's get to it. Uh, Return of the Living Deadpool. <laughs> I mean, 
it was it was so fun and ridiculous and this yeah. art i love this art i love the way they did it where everything's in black and white but deadpool or the deadpools and the blood yeah. so there was some red and blacks and then black and white and i love cool. the the relationship he had with this girl that he found throughout it she was really cool uh and it was just a good it was a good zombie story but with Deadpool's, <laughs> like right. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I agree. So this was definitely my favorite of the bunch. Um, too. And probably second favorite was was the Hawkeye one. That I, was super fun. Right, I agree with that. That was my second favorite. Yeah, I totally. Okay, here's some of my jam up questions. Just as Omar know that you don't take the duck jacket. <laughs> I'm off? gonna tell him now. Uh, did you read Infinite Crisis on me without taking the drug jacket That's a good question. Uh, I probably did. I can't remember now. Um, Man, how do you function? <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> you know I hate dust jackets anyway. Yeah. But of course I take them off. I mean, you're, you're going to damage them. They're going to get in your way. Yeah, that's true. Gabe commented about people not removing their dust jackets. He called them monsters. All right. <laughs> All right. I I will. I promise I will start taking my dust jackets off m m all the time now. You do you. I just think you're going to feel better with a naked omnibus. Well, it's a good point to keep the dust jacket in good condition. You don't want it to get yeah. all pumpered up. One day you may sell these. Yeah, well, and I don't want them on my shelf with raggedy edges yeah, and stuff. looking all trashy. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Omni monster. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't want them in bad shape. So I, I have learned my lesson. I will, uh, right. I will do that from now on. Yes, I will. You'll like it. I think you'll like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you to the chat and thank you for everybody that tuned in. Oh, here's Justin Bear. I read with a dust jacket. No Fs given. Okay, you do you. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. I promise. Um, so this was good. We, we read, uh, we enjoyed four out of the five books. And we got a history lesson. And yep. we also <laughs> talked about the current state of the industry, which was good. I like that. Um, and the current state of your dust jackets. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. Boy, dust jackets matter. <laughs> I, I will always take my dust jackets off from now on. Um, and uh, let's see, the chat was great. Thank you to everybody that participated. We really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you again in two weeks. And when are um, uh, Fangirls Assemble on next? Uh, tomorrow night, we're doing our Halls and Reads. So oh. if you like Halls and Reads, it's happening. Who doesn't like Halls and Reads? I know. It's only the best show. <laughs> Here's Taylor coming in late because I leave my books in the shrink wrap. I'm all I'm, messed up. I mean, I do that with some things. I don't do anything right, man. <laughs> I'm a mess. So thank you to everyone. We appreciate it. We'll see you again in two weeks. And peace and love, peace and love. Thanks, guys. <laughs>